Today's beer of the day is going to be the Ranger IPA from New Belgium Breweries. Great IPA, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, can't complain about that. Great beer for a hot summer day. All right, the Swift Claws guys, haven't had a chance to uh, mess around with these guys in a great long while. I just don't do bikes. Uh, if I want to play bikes, I play one of my bike armies, so I'm not really a subject matter in regards to that. Their price points went down five points, nothing substantial, but they're just bikes with worse weapon skill. I'll leave it at that. They do have rage, so they, they are going to get additional assaults, but if you like bikes, go for bikes. I'm just, I've never been a big bike guy for my Space Wolves. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, rhinos, Razorbacks, drop pods are all fast attack choices now, and with the new rules, that means that you're going to be seeing drop pods with any and everything in there. Uh, so we'll see that here in the near future as well. Stormwolf, uh, very cool. We'll talk about that later. And then the Thunderwolf Cavalry. So this is going to be the big winner of the, uh, of the thing. First off, these guys went down substantially. 10 points in reduction, which is awesome. And then their war gear went down uh, a substantial amount of points as well. Plus, now the packs can be bigger. Before you had one to five Thunderwolves, and now you can have six, but you have to have a minimum of uh, three. So that's a little bit different. You know, if you had that extra 50 points to throw into that, that uh, Thunderwolf. The other thing too is now you don't have to take one specialty weapon per unit. You can actually throw, every, you can give everybody a Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield if you want to. The other thing too is that the weapons went down significantly in cost. So if you look at the melee weapon, a model can replace his his bolt pistol and or his weapon with one of the following. So you could do a Thunder Hammer for 30 points and a Storm Shield for 15 points, 45 points, where before you were paying 30 points for a Storm Shield and uh, 30 points for a Thunder Hammer. So, that is significant point drop. So you're talking about 25 points uh, if you want to run them with Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield, which I just, I, I like it. That's, that's just my style. Big winners. Also, the outflanking. Um, we're going to see a lot of that. I can tell you here in the near future. So you're going to have Thunder Wolf Calvary on turn two coming up and getting into your face and attacking you on turn three. So just be prepared, guys. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. The uh, Fenrisian Wolves, eh, they, uh, they lost a little bit. Um, not as good as they used to be in regards to their points are a little cheaper um, For most characters they're eight points instead of ten points uh, Their attacks are the same but the big thing is you can't augment their leadership with the old saga rules So that kind of sucks uh, Cyberwolf went up two points as well That kind of sucks, uh, but you can still do squads of 15. So that's pretty cool. I Still love them. They're a great tar pit unit the Sky Claws, uh, these guys did go down in points as well, um, pretty pretty significantly, uh, three points. So that's pretty good. They're right on line with the old models. You can upgrade a Wolf Guard, so that's that was dramatically needed. They still have the Rage and Counterattack, all that's the same. But one cool thing is you can actually do a squad of five. Now you can actually have two uh, special weapons, which is pretty cool. But you're gonna be playing with it with that Blister Skill three. So just remember that. Land speeders, pretty much the same. Nothing really has changed here that jumps out at me. I, I think the missile launchers have went down 20, uh, 15 points, so that's good. And the heavy flamer is free now. The multi milta is uh, down 10 points. So these got a little bit cheaper. Land speed a little bit more uh, manageable. The storm fan gunship, we don't have enough information about that yet, so just stand by. Uh, we'll get to that here after some tests, but it looks to be pretty awesome. Now, the Lone Fangs took a little beating, nothing substantial. Uh, their points are, are pretty much the same. They do have this Lone Fang Ancient, it was basically the squad leader. The one interesting thing is you don't have to give them a heavy weapon. It's actually in there that you do not, you know, it, you don't, you must not, you don't have to must change it now, which is, is weird. Uh, the other rumor about them not being able to take a drop pot or a razor bag is crap. You can do that, it's no big deal. Um, so uh, the Wolf Guard can take anything from the ranged weapon, less of the melee weapon. He can have melted bombs. You can upgrade him to a Terminator if you want, just like before. So there's no loss in flavor with being able to put a Terminator with a power armor squad, which I always liked. It was just always cool to me. They still have the split fire rule. That's pretty much it. I, I've heard some people complain about them, but it's still, for, for as, as far as I'm concerned, it works. They have crack missiles now, which is different, which is a bonus. So can't really complain there. 
And then, you know, we have our other, you know, Vindicator, Whirlwind, who uses the Whirlwind Predators, all the same. Um, I don't really, I didn't really perceive any point difference. Uh, that stuff's all pretty standard. Yeah, that's all the same. All right, Lord of War, Logan Grimnar. Okay, I ran Logan pretty much in every Space Wolf army that I played. Uh, with the exception of smaller games when he's just too much too much of an expensive of the expense of a character so Off the bat the base Logan model got cheaper. He went from 275 to 250 uh, He takes out the Lord of War spot, which is not really a problem with me because there's no other Lord of War that I'm gonna have His stat line is pretty much the same with the exception of he got he finally got that extra wound which he dramatically needed the Axe of Morakai is pretty much the same as well. Uh, you know, you can split your attacks between one-handed and two-handed, plus one AP, plus two AP three, and plus uh, times two AP two, uh, two-handed unwieldy. Now, one thing about this is not plus one; it is plus two, for, so it's in line with an axe. So that's a little bit better. But of course, the cool thing about that is it's not unwieldy. So you, you can use it as an axe one-handed and still strike initiative order, but he's getting a plus two uh, difference to strength, which is cool. Uh, now his special rules though, really got nerfed. There's no more High King and there's no more Living Legend, which sucks. So the Living Legend, anybody within 18 inches, you can use that once a, once a game and everybody get plus one attacks, is gone. The High King rule, which was pretty much the most flavorful thing that he had and I gotta tell you guys, um, I don't know if it's worth that extra wound or or the uh, the storm rider. Um, you know the the you know basically every turn, every player turn, you can you can nominate to be fearless, tank hunter, relentless, or preferred enemy. Uh, and that I love that rule. Um, I use it all the time. It was one of my main strategies. I mean, dropping him with some long fangs and making them relentless, and then him jumping over to, you know, some blood claw and giving them preferred enemy, or uh, staying with the long fangs and giving them tank hunter, or, or making another squad fearless, and you can call it at each each round. So, you know, but I did save 25 points on him, and I guess I'm gonna have to deal with it. You know, there's there's a change. You have to deal with it. So. The other big difference though is the Storm Rider. So a lot of people have been complaining about the cart. I think it looks awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Um, that looks pretty badass. It's, it's within the Norse mythology. Thor had a cart pulled by, you know, goats or something. I don't know. You know, it's cool. I'm, I'm down with it. It's an extra 70 points. Makes him a chariot open topped, which is pretty badass. It's basically giving him three extra wounds. Um, and making those, you know, armor 12, so, you know, small arms fire uh, isn't going to be able to do anything. So anything below a 6, strength 6, is basically not going to touch him. Uh, so you have to have a, a strength 6 to, to hit it. If it's a penetrating hit, it's automatically taken as glancing hit, and it's got a 4-up invulnerable. So he is going to be devastating. It gives him, I think, three additional, three or four additional attacks. Four additional strength five AP, uh, nothing attacks in the assault phase. Made it initiative five, uh, and has the rending special rule. So this is going to give all of his attacks rending, which is devastating. I mean, like at that point, I wouldn't even take the power fist attacks unless I'm trying to kill a monster, because with the number of attacks that he has, they're all rending. Are you kidding me? Talking about ten attacks with rending? Come on now, that's disgusting so i know i know it, it's he's going to be nasty uh we're going to be see, I, I think we're going to see a lot of mobile very fast armies so yeah i lost some flavor i i feel like what they did for for logan grimnar is made him what they should have made ragnar just a close combat monster and and logan i think should be more the tactician that if he gets in the midst of it he can hold his own but he's better at supporting and boosting some troops you know and he can move around and he's more of the general. So, but I'm pretty happy with him. The great company formation, uh, Jarl of Rus, uh, they can uh, re-roll their, uh, their warlord traits, cunning of the wolf, 
Basically, before deployment, you roll a d6, and each uh, troop choice that has an independent character gets plus two on a roll of six. That unit gains the outflanking rule. A lot of outflanking wolves, so just stay tuned for that, guys. How the wolves, they uh, have fear and furious charge. Nasty. And the formation is one wolf lord, one wolf guard battle leader, one unit of wolf guard, five units of gray hunters, one unit of wolf scouts, three units of, of the following, either blood claw, swift claw, or sky claw, so you need your blood claw units, and two units of long fangs. One of the restrictions, one unit of gray hunters must have the wolf standard, and you can only have one poor formation. Um, and I forgot to talk about the wolf standard that changed. We'll go back there real quick. But basically, it's an attack bonus now, um, which, kind of makes up for, you know, kind of makes up for the loss of the totem. I, I think that, like I said, I said to my buddy, I think that wolves are going to be more devastating now um, in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, but they're still going to be able to hold the midfield pretty well. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not horribly upset about it, you know. Um, actually, you even have the option to read what the wolf standard is here. We have to look someplace else. So that's one thing. I think they get, get some glitches to get out of this system but it'll happen soon enough. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the codex. It looks pretty cool. I can't wait to get my special edition. I'm not gonna go through the sagas. There's nothing really that's that super, and I'm not very impressed with them. They are what they are. I, I think they're not sagas anymore. They're just warlord traits. And you know, they're, they're about average what you get. The Hellfrost, of course, I think is gonna be the new, the new uh, lovely, because the Hellfrost special rule, making somebody take a strength test and them dying is pretty nifty. So pretty cool, and the, the, a lot of different other options that I think we're gonna see, uh, you know, come out and some new combos will be pretty interesting and once you get it on the table. So the book, it's pretty cool. I mean, the, the app is pretty cool, I'm digging it. Uh, as that goes, I do like these apps every once in a while, especially you can highlight some stuff. The Black Death seems like a pretty cool weapon, talked about that before. And the Tempest Disciplines, I'll do that on a separate video. Uh, when we look at some of the psychic powers of how to arm your Space Wolves. Other cool thing is Space Wolves get six HQ choices. So that's 750 per HQ, bull crap, another bull crap rumor. I hate that crap. Um, now there's not that many objectives secured in this Wolf to Unleashed attachment. So you still wanna go to your standard CAD if you want that objective secured. Looking forward to it and I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited. Of course you have the, the Force Building app in the back here it'll work for me which is it's not a bad it's not a bad app so pretty good guys like i said before i've been playing space wolves for 25 years now i'm not terribly upset with this uh list i'm excited there's some new options i think there's a lot of savings uh to make a more competitive list and so i think my uh, buddies in my gaming club are going to be pretty upset when my wolves come and you know go for the throat so thanks guys thanks for watching you can check us out at beer and boulders 40k on YouTube and check out the podcast. Uh, you can get that on iTunes as well, the Beer and Bolters 40K podcast. Thanks for watching and let us know what you guys think. And we'll be back soon with some uh, the data card reviews and then also I'll have the whole Wolf Guard special edition with the uh, Champions of Fenris. All right, guys, thank you. Take care.